So I added actually food by today. So we can do a bit. 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 So and I want to share it and then I'll join you in Yeah, and you saw that with your students too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. I gave them, like, I, I, like, last minute because we presented at the, like, Shiloh's little you know? subsequent meeting. I was like, you know what? Ran over to the students. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and then your kids are also in school, yeah? They go away, like, to camp for the summer? Or you can talk about that camp. She, she comes with, uh, she's, she's in Marathon or no? I remember you told me that the last time. I always okay, so she gets on vacation too. We get to see the grandkids. It's a long flight too, no? Like what, 10, 15 hours? 10 hours. Yeah. Which city? I care. I know where that is. I've heard of it before. It would be nice. We're going to give like five minutes at the end. Director of the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology, Awesome Board Community Hey! Hi, everybody. Hi. So, so we're actually going to do two presentations today because we've been working with uh, uh, 3D printing. And the first one uh, involves using 3D technology in some of the getaway classes that we have to increase active learning. So my colleague is going to start first. No, he's not going to start first. Maybe she's going to start. start first. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to figure out how to go next. Yeah, because that's not happening. And pressing down is not good. We can improvise. <laughs> We've been there before. Hmm. It's happening. So technology is great. <laughs> yeah. It's supposed to make our life easier, and it does. You just have to have faith in us. <laughs> you have to be patient. Ta-da! Yes. Do you need the next one? Um, we need all the slides. So oh, no. <laughs> if I do this, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, uh, so my nice. name is Sarah Kampfitzer. I'm from the Biological Sciences Department, except Mark. We all are from the same department, actually. Um, so basically, um, we have many, many courses that we offer in our department, but the, the two gateway, the two main gateway courses are Anatomy Physiology 1 and 2 series and General Biology 1 and 2 series. And um, there are similar topics covered in each classes um, with the same emphasis. Of course, we cover these topics more in depth in anatomy physiology, but the idea is the same. We just basically give them the, the background they need. And most of the students coming into these gateway courses come with no science background, and sometimes they have little science background from the, the high school level. And they mostly struggle with understanding the basic concepts because they don't have any medical terminology or science uh, terms that they need. And um, therefore, they struggle along the way, especially in the first few weeks, especially in the chemistry parts um, of the, the, the chapters. And we're going to emphasize it in uh, her conversations about uh, her experiences. And 
Most of the time, they are not interested because they are required to take these courses for their majors. And some are interested because they want to be uh, scientists, but only a handful of those. So then it poses a big problem. How are we going to engage the students in the material and understanding science? And then we come up with different ways in our department. So uh, we've been using virtual labs, videos, interactive learning styles like playing games in the labs, uh, having them work in groups, ask questions to each other, uh, go over the material as big groups. And recently we implemented, we started implementing a, a technique called flipped classroom. I'm sure many, many of you heard of this uh, teaching technique. So flipped classroom basically is a platform in which students uh, come to the class prepared and then they start discussing the topics and ask questions to each other. And sometimes we give them pretests and posters about what they learned uh, prior to coming to the class. And after the discussions, they basically had um, as in the post tests. Um, recently, we started using the three of us started using the three D uh, printed models as interactive uh, learning styles for our students. And we're going to share the experience from students in the in the last slide. But I can give you a heads up. They really <coughs> like that. They they want to see more of these models. So, okay. So what exactly is 3D printing, right? So most of us, when we think of printers, think of the standard sort of printers that print out our documents, right? But 3D printing actually involves creating a physical 3D object using uh, digital models that we have specific kind of design software to help us create. And basically it prints out using a specialized 3D printer. Now, the objects can either be an original design that you come up with and create yourselves, or you can actually go online and find other 3D print files that other people have created, and then go on that database and take it from there and print out those models. Now, the question is, when you are kind of using these models in your class, why would you want 3D printed models versus, you know, buying a model, let's say, from, you know, a purchase model from one of these, you know, I teach biology, so one of these bio companies. So 3D printed models allow for customization. You can customize it based on your specific lesson, and that allows for a lot of opportunity. 3D printed models can be designed to be manipulated. A lot of the models that we use in our labs are more for just kind of seeing, um, but if you want the students to sort of be able to play around with the models, and as Rafi's going to be showing you with her model that she helped design, um, you can actually play around and work with it so the students can be much more interactive with it. Um, 3D printed models are cheaper compared to the models that you can purchase, as well as the last sort of really major benefit, which is if you want to involve the students in the process, you can actually allow them to help design the model for the class and for the model that they'll actually be using. So Robbie is now going to tell you a little bit more, more about, about the that. pedagogical benefits. Well, she already went through like, uh, some of the pedagogical benefits, which is the interaction that the students can have, uh, uh, can have with the model. You can, have, you can be a little more creative. You can try to target what you're doing to the, uh, to the lesson that you are uh, uh, that you're teaching. Uh, we have a lot of students that maybe are lacking a little in some of the ability, like, you know, reading a lot of stuff is like, a, it's hard for them. Understanding some of the concept is hard because they have other challenges in terms of like trying to uh, go through the material. But they are actually very good at like uh, uh, at 3D, at like uh, uh, engaging with things. And that's what the 3D printing models can actually uh, give you. And they're much more uh, willing to maybe express themselves and ask questions and explain things if they're also doing something else, which is what, again, you can do with them. Um, we do have a lot of images, and I don't know if it's just my experience. Uh, we have beautiful pictures, and they actually don't look at them, or they don't engage with this beautiful diagram of whatever the heck you want, action potential, and so on. We do have other activities, but if you can transform that 2D design, if you can find a way to transform it into something 3D that they can use, uh, they are much more willing to actually, uh, you know, take the time to actually uh, uh, learn the uh, concept. And uh, um, they also lend themselves very well to work, uh, to have them work as a group. 
And again, I don't know if I'm just talking about my experience, but when I have the students in the class, and I'm like, hey, you guys are going to work as a group. And I look at them, and they're sitting like you, and I'm like, feel free to introduce each other and learn each other's name, because, you know, when I say you're going to work as a group, uh, and it's very hard. It's like, I'm like, I know you have social skills. I can see you when you're not in class. Um, so it's kind of a way to get them started, and then they figure out which, other, which strengths they have and which weaknesses they, um, they have. Um, now, these are some examples. This is actually something that uh, I have a colleague actually at City Tech that uh, uh, printed this out. But this is a typical example. I think if any of you is a biologist um, professor, and sometimes you talk about Phineas Gage skull and how the damage of uh, the brain is actually the frontal lobe and it didn't really affect. And they see the image and it's like, oh, okay, it's bad. But if you can print it out, you literally can see where the metal was going through the skull. Again, much more powerful. And this is one of the uh, models that you can literally, because it's like so nice and powerful, you can find, you can probably print it out very easily. You don't even have to worry about it. There's like material out there. This one, and if it works, I'm gonna be so impressed. It probably will not because I can see that it does. Ah, all right. So I'm gonna give you uh, an interpretative dance of antibodies <laughs> and antigens. <laughs> so this is actually, um, someone uh, put this on Thinkverse, which is a big database where people, if you create something and you want to share with other people, you can put it on the database. And there are just, it can be like a very raw design or it can be something more complex. You can even have a full lesson plan if, that, uh, if you desire. And this beautiful video that you can't see, this person actually created uh, um, antibodies and this is a, uh, it's a cell or something with antigen, and he created them with, uh, um, with magnets, and then he put them floating in water. So what you're supposed to see is the antibodies moving around and then finding the antigen and binding to the antigen. So I was thinking about having that printed out. It's a little complex to print out, even if they, uh, the schematic are online, but just even showing a video like this of 3D printing to the students and make them understand that that's the way that antibody work in the blood when they find the antigen can be a good start for a discussion. So I'm very grateful for the person that went through the trouble to create these, uh, uh, these models. But again, what you can do and what we like to do is also create stuff for ourselves, right? Um, and one of the things that I find with my students, particularly I teach intro to bio, general bio. We get a lot of students that if they took uh, biology, it was maybe living environment. Sometimes if they were good enough, they took it in ninth grades. They didn't have any other science after that. If they didn't take chemistry, living environment uh, in public school doesn't even really touch upon atoms and structures and so on. So first part of intro to bio is general. Uh, it's kind of, they're like, this is chemistry. This is not biology professor. Um, so they hate the part, they don't understand why they have to, it doesn't make sense to them. So I wanted, come on people, I wanted to create something that would help them uh, work with the atom and the structure of the atom and, uh, you know, electrons and shells and so on. And I have it, so I'm going to give it out to you because that's what we made and that actually exists. <laughs> so uh, if you want to play around a little, I've got stuff for you. I shall count all the electrons and make sure that. Uh, uh, so I think I was just the hooker is there. So, and if someone wants to spend um, some time, this is pretty much the way that the electrons were uh, printed out, and they are on this shell. So initially, because they just printed them out, the students were actually taking the electrons off. So this is actually if someone, you know, some people pop bubbles, some people remove electrons from like, you know. So this is actually something that I created um, for the classroom because those, you know, I asked them to draw and with the atoms, you know, where are the protons, where are the electrons and so on. Um, yeah, it was okay. They didn't dislike it. They actually love doing this uh, because they had to, they had to put it together themselves. They really had to count the stuff. In terms of the process, this was actually uh, going back and forth between Mark and I because I knew what I wanted. But I didn't just want, uh, um, you know, I didn't just want these in a static way. 
I wanted to be able to create something that I could use to, hey, can you actually uh, make an atom, an oxygen atom? Can you actually show me a bond? So if you uh, look at your, can I just like, steal that one back one second? Sure. I can have not the two shells and a couple of electrons is all I need. <laughs> <laughs> so what we actually spent some time doing, because I wanted this to be able to create a bond, is actually to create a structure where if I put an electron here and I put the electron here, now I actually have a bond. So, uh, so that, that was our design going back and forth in terms of like, okay, how can I create something where it's actually easy to do, but it also works. So I was able to create a last one where it's like, hey, can you actually make an atom for me? Can you try to create like a small molecule? It's obviously not going to be incredibly complex. And what I noticed, I, I did it. Something that I learned was like, uh, okay, I need to cut down this lesson in smaller bits and pieces because it's a little too complex. Our classes are 50 minutes. So finding the time was a little, right, <laughs> was a little tight, which is why the flip classroom comes like a, a useful because at least you introduce this kind of concept. When they come in, if you give them the exercise and you already ask them to draw the atoms uh, uh, at home and you ask them to draw it again and then you are like, hey, as a group, create this stuff that I tell you, it works a little better. But I was like, okay, create the atom. The bonds need just to be another class, or I need to find a little more time to do that. Um, one thing that I noticed, the only molecule that we really talk about is water. And, you know, you talk about it because it's polar. And this is a little too static to create something polar. So our next part of the design is that we may want to create a shell that is flexible with a way for the electrons to actually move. So it's a little more dynamic than what we have now. But in terms of the creativity of the students, which I was actually very impressed, um, they realized that this was not going to work because you have your two hydrogen on the side. So they took one of the bigger shells, which has a little more flexibility, and they just took the big shells and they put it here. But they realized that this was not the perfect shell. So because I asked them, hey, you do it as a group, you take a picture, you send me the picture, and that's how you're going to be graded, and it's going to show me that you did the activity. So they did these, and they're like, okay, professor, this is water, but this is not the right shell, are we going to lose points? <laughs> and I was like, no, you're going to lose points because you're very creative, and you figured it out that that's the way that it should be, and my design was not giving you that flexibility. So, um, so we're working on that, but I was very impressed by the fact that they actually were thinking about that as a group. They figured out that that's the way that the electrons were supposed to be uh, set up as a, as a structure. I don't know if Mark wants to say anything about the time that we took to create all, all this design. Is, we were trying to figure out the design. We were trying to look for something that was robust enough for the students not to break. Um, and we, we might have come up with something a little bit more place foolish than, than needs to be. So we're going to go for a second iteration, the uh, electron to be able to slide around. Uh, and, it's, and it's interesting. We, we had to go through a couple iterations to make this happen. More. Probably. Well, there are things that, and we're going to ask the students. We we are already asking their, their opinion. But if you saw the uh, the nucleus, what they did in the beginning, and like obviously you need your uh, neutrons, you need your protons. So I created them. As you can see, I just went to paper and I got color paper and like that. Um, so the next thing that we were thinking, maybe make uh, uh, the nucleus with like a material that you can write with the marker, so they can write it in. But then I was talking to one of the other professors who were talking about it, and she's like, but this is nice, because they have to look for the number, and they need to stick it there. So visually, maybe more engaging. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe we're going to try both ways, and we're going to see what the students feel. We can also have both. It's not like you are prevented from having. So we are trying out different things. And again, that's the flexibility, that you can be like, oh, this model is nice. I actually want to change it and make it better, or maybe I want to make that shell for when I do the bonds, but I like this for when they have to create the atom. You have the flexibility to kind of like adapt your model to the kind of thing that you want to, uh, that you want to do. I did talk a lot, I apologize, but so these are my students. As you can see, some of them are more, they're happier, it's like, yeah, picture. And some of the other are like, I don't exist, but they were willing to have me take pictures of them doing the, uh, doing the activity. Um, 
this, so this was an original. Now, Seher and Gaudi. So we basically, Seher and I both teach Bio 23, and that is the first anatomy and physiology course, which is a gateway course for a lot of the health sort of tracks that our students take. And one of the hardest topics is actually protein synthesis. Um, it's very, you know, a complicated sort of process that the students a lot of times have trouble understanding. So we basically got this, um, this idea from this uh, database thing verse, it was where we printed it out from. And it's kind of like a puzzle and the students have to put together the pieces. So you create a DNA and you have to be able to match it up with the correct complementary strands. There's a lot of pieces. I don't know, you can take a look at what it just looks like. Uh, but, um, and then from there, they then have to create the corresponding mRNA strand for one of those DNA strands. And then they can make the uh, polypeptide. Um, so it's a very sort of fun activity. Um, I actually got a lot of student responses, which we're gonna talk about at the end as well. But we had a lot of positive experiences. And I wasn't initially involved actually in this whole sort of uh, 3D printing cohort, but me and Rafi share an office and I just, I saw the model that she was just to out. listen to me talk. <laughs> so I was like, I wanna jump on this and try this out in my class. And I had a really good experience with my students and I think Sahir yes. also did. Um, I've been teaching Bio 23 for almost 26 years. And this is the first semester I tried 3D, 3D printing, basically hands on x-rays. I've been teaching talk and talk. I've been showing videos, animations. They seem to understand, but this is the first time students show the real interest, real understanding, because they knew what pieces come together. They were they were investigating all together as a group and having conversations like this piece should go with this. Oh, now I understand why different nominations should be coming after this. So they're following this pattern from DNA. So they were able to see it and live it through basically using these models. And it was a great, great experience. I'm talking about 26 years of teaching experience, and this is the best semester ever teaching this course. I mean, this topic. Yes. Don't push the whole course, man. <laughs> So we already talked a little about the student feedback and again they are happy they like to be engaged they i mean it doesn't matter uh, i'm fairly noisy and i okay my jokes are not great but i try uh but they're still falling asleep sometimes during class it's just too much yes. uh, it's just too much material and it's like too much all together usually we have i think you have three hours classes i have my lecture is 50 minutes but usually it's right after lab or right before lab which means that they've been listening to you approximately like three hours on and off. I mean, come on, even if you like someone and they don't necessarily <laughs> like you, right? Um, some of the feedback is that, again, they want to spend more time with the models, mm -hmm. which yeah. is yeah. something yeah. requested. It. Yes, they, yeah. want, they want to have more models for different topics. And they also admitted that they uh, closely work with their classmates and they get to know each other more. Mm -hmm. And they learned uh, some of the classmates made names in that group work. Yeah. It was into like two, one and a half months into the semester, and they did not know each other's names. So by doing that, they were interacting and also doing the active learning, has an experience, so they were extremely happy and asking for more marks. And one of the main feedbacks also that I got from my class was that if you notice, you kind of need a lot of space to work with these models. Mm -hmm. So in the traditional sort of class with the desks, even when you put the desk together, it's still a little wonky mm -hmm. and hard to work with it. We do have actually at BCC one of the classrooms that's a flip um, kind of classroom that has tables sort of like this. So that's a really good classroom to use these models in. And also the lab benches, the lab tables also would be a really good sort of place to work with these. But even with the, the conventional sort of desk, the students still really loved it and um, still definitely worthwhile to use it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, those are all the happy feedbacks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my students, um, we basically collected feedback and uh, they basically were very, very happy. Um, these are some of the, uh, the feedback that we got. Yeah, I had the same feedback. Yeah. <laughs> we need another iteration, or maybe a couple more iterations of the models because some of them were not fitting correctly, but mm. as it is, they really liked it. Yeah. But this was, again, the first semester. This was actually tested out, so it only probably will get better from here. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, the, the feedback was really positive. And it's also interesting because the first time, this was one of the first things that they printed out, the, um, the atoms, and I think that uh, uh, I wasn't quite sure and if it was going to work or not. And then when I did it the first time, which was last semester, 
I realized that the activity was too long. They didn't have that much time. So in my mind, it was kind of like, it was okay, they like it, but it's kind of a failure. It definitely needs some work. Um, and you know, you do the atom at the beginning of the semester. And sometimes in, uh, uh, at the end of November, one of my students is like, so what happened with the stuff that we did in the beginning? You're not gonna do stuff like that anymore because that was actually fun. I'm like, oh, you actually remember? Because usually I ask you, do you remember what we did last week? And you're like, mm-hmm. And I'm like, you remember that? Okay, maybe this is good. <laughs> maybe we should do it. Um, in, the, in the future, actually, starting next semester, we want to design some surveys, mm -hmm. actual surveys to us, uh, Test the true feelings of students and right. document to also this is our next um, aim. Right, and also to see if they have feedback because again, we are drawing it based on what we want and what we think works, but we've also been doing this for quite a long time. So there are maybe some things that we're not seeing that is a struggle for the student. Uh, so getting feedback from them, what worked, what didn't really work or how maybe they would like it um it's going to be actually uh it's going to be interesting to see you know are we really just missing the point because we think you're learning this way and you're like i don't know what you're doing man so <laughs> and that's it if you have any questions perplexities well i have a question i'm just thinking about this i'm really interested about seeing what i see but now you know pretty much uh the elephants is just the beginning of what i teach Mm -hmm. About that, uh, until it's my first term in term 11. Mm -hmm. But what I'm really interested in, if you, must, if you can do something about bonding, through the bond, that's one thing. The second thing is if you can do something about the long hair. Because when I'm going to do a Louis structure for my student, mm -hmm. obviously for me, I'm a strong believer that this visualization is the key. Mm -hmm. If you can see it with your eyes, you can understand. Mm -hmm. That's my question. Um, hey, you know, you were going to create like a PD, you should take it and then try to see if you actually have like, because again, you know what you're doing in your class, right? We're all teaching the same stuff, but we're all teaching with our own stream, we're stretching different things, we have an idea of how we want them uh, to learn, even if it's the same material. So uh, there are, again, if you go on Steamverse, you're going to find different uh, uh, atoms that people uh, printed out, um, things that we are not interested in because we don't teach it you know, uh, the different orbitals, you can have something that is more 3D. In many ways, this is still kind of like a 3D, a 2D structure, mm -hmm. even if they can interact with it. Obviously, if you are in chemistry, you want something that is a little more 3D. In fact, in our next presentation, you're gonna see another representation of the atom that may please you uh, a little more. But there are actually um, uh, models of like of the different orbitals, things that can, again can be more appealing to uh, uh, to chemistry. But again, you can also create them yourself once you learn uh, a little, and you can create them so that you're building up on every little thing that you're doing. It's it work, but uh, it can be done. But look at that! I created an atom. Okay, I'll come to your office. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah, no problem. How much money you have, you <laughs> Uh, any other questions? I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. How are you trying to find the balance of the hands-on activity with theory and different things? Because from what you're saying, it's a struggle for time. Well, it is a struggle particularly uh, for people that teach uh, general bio, uh, at least at BCC, because we have 50 minutes. So we are definitely integrating more of a, a flipped classroom. So again, for example, with the Atom, we do give them a little presentation, a little videos where they're like, okay, you should come in and you should know what the proton is, what the neutron is, what the electron is, and that there are shells and the nucleus. So that's very basic stuff. But when you come in, I don't want to spend like a, a 10 or 15 minutes repeating all this stuff. You should know it. Uh, you're going to take a little quiz. So when I give you this, you are not going to be like, what the heck is this? And also they're working in groups and they do help each other a lot when they are in group. And they do look at their notes if they don't know stuff. So it's gonna release a little of the, of the uh, pressure. Uh, and again, it's going to take some time to find the balance to be like, okay, now I got this down. That's gonna take me 10 minutes. I can use the rest of the class maybe to do a little more of the concepts that I usually don't have time because I have to spend time doing this. And just so, to sort of add on to that, so here and I have the opposite problem. Right. Our class is close to three hours, so students don't want to just sit there the whole time, you know, hearing us talk. So we also do the flip class, and that helps a lot mm -hmm. uh, because that does lend itself more time for class activities. But this is a great way to sort of 
be able to get the class more, you know, interactive and be able to, to take some of that time and they're still learning, but it doesn't have to be okay. me just, yeah, me just sort of like, and, yeah, you know, well, talking to you only, yeah. We're also thinking, uh, you know, if we can actually, and again, this is just the beginning, find the time in the classroom, but if we have these models and they are available, for, for example, in the tutoring lab, there may be some activities that if you cannot do them in the classroom, you can still have the activity and be like, hey, if you go to the tutoring lab, they're going to be able to practice this. Mm -hmm. So again, it gives you the flexibility of creating something that then you can put in different places using different ways. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.